President Trump kicked off his re-election campaign in the battleground state of Florida last night at 8 p.m. Eastern. Sunshine State has proven to be key in winning the White House. I'm thrilled to be back in my second home. That's what it is. It's my second home. In many cases, I think I could say it's my first home. You want to know the truth? It's the great state of Florida. So I've come to Florida today to ask you for your vote. We're traveling your state not only asking for the vote, I'm here to ask for your help. If it hadn't been for Florida, I might not be here today. So why is Florida so important for presidential candidates to win there? Here to explain is the president of America First Policies, Brian Walsh. Brian, good morning to you. Good morning to you. How are you doing today? Uh, doing okay. Uh, president Trump was talking about this is like my second home. He's actually spent a 100 days of his presidency down in Florida, which I think is some sort of a record. Yeah, I mean, listen, we've known, as you just saw in your clip, that Florida's been a traditional battleground state for years. Why is it so important? 29 electoral votes. Um, win Florida, and it gives you a big boost when it comes to the general election. You know, we feel confident today the same way that uh, Governor DeSantis won Florida last year, Senator Scott won Florida last year, that President Trump won Florida in 2016, that he's going to be victorious again. Well, I tell you what, we're going to go over to the big board and take a look at some of the results in the past. Uh, as you can see right there, in 2016, it was really close, but President Trump prevailed over Hillary Clinton. Before that, uh, Barack Obama prevailed over Mitt Romney, in, uh, mm -hmm. and it was so close. Then you've got, before that, Barack Obama prevailed over John McCain, and in 2004, George Bush beat John Kerry. These are all really close. And then, of course, the <laughs> ultimate close one was in 2000, yeah, Al right. Gore and GWB at 48.8 percent. So. I was reading in Axios uh, that apparently, Brian, uh, one of the reasons they wanted to do Orlando was because they knew they would get a, a big crowd. But at the same time, uh, when you register for one of these rallies, you get all sorts of information that the campaign can use. They want to hoover up as much as they can. Yeah, I think uh, Brad Parscale and the team on the campaign are doing an excellent job of using data and social media the same way the president used Twitter in 2016 and continues to use it today. So as people RSVP to these rallies, they're obviously signing up for not just attending, but they're signing up for getting updates and news and information. And it's right. going to allow the campaign as we get into next year to, to, uh, to talk to those people, give them messages, turn them out, and ask them to volunteer and help participate in, in, this, in this historic sure. event. And, and, you know, energy-wise... Uh, would you say that last night was on par with the kickoff four years ago or a little over that top? Well, I think last night wasn't just a kickoff. It wasn't just a rally. Last night was a celebration. In fact, I thought it was interesting. The president kept using the word we. Right. Kept saying, look at what we've done. Because what he realized is, you know, you're talking thousands of people waiting in the rain overnight, thousands of people packing yes. that okay. stadium, all celebrating the achievements of the last, of, of what, what we've been able to accomplish as a movement, okay. as a movement of people under the leadership of President Trump. Great observation. All right, uh, Brian Walsh, we thank you very much for joining us live. Thanks, guys. Take well, care.